Welcome back. This is part 2 to, What if Issei leaves Rias Grimori's peerage? Before starting, I would like to thank you all for 1k subs I was shocked honestly. I appreciate it thank you all so much for this smile words couldn't begin to describe how I feel. Now without further ado here part 2. Chapter 5 The Battle Now, the battle of the century is about to begin. From the East Gate, it's Saraorg Bale's team said the announcer, who was met with roars of approval, from the excited crowd. And finally from the west gate, it's Rias Grimori's team, finished the announcer, getting many more screams of excitement. The Grimori group looked unsettled though. Their heart wasn't with them as they marched out, the masses couldn't pick up on it, but Saraorg easily did. Saraorg searched for the one he wanted to fight the most, Issei Hyodo, Red Dragon Emperor. However, he wasn't there. As the announcer told everyone the rules, Saraorg came to a decision. Once the announcer finished speaking and said for the two teams to head to their area, Saraorg spoke up. Since the Grimori group is missing their pawn at this time, I too, will take my pawn out of the equation. Declared Saraorg loudly, what's this? Asked the announcer, before looking at the Grimori group closely. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems as though the famed Red Dragon Emperor is not present today. This might explain why there was a delay for this match, however, Saraorg has graciously taken his pawn out of the battle as well, equalizing things. Said the announcer loudly, the crowd was surprised at this, noticing that the Opai dragon was indeed not present. Some of the crowd cheered for Saraorg, for his gesture, while others muttered quietly at the lack of the red dragon emperor. The Grimori group could say nothing and went to their area in silence. Line break. The first match, had Yuto Kiba up against Baruka Furkas, a knight of Saraorg, from the house of Furkas, a family that tames horses and one of remaining 72 pillar families. Kiba was being beat back by Furkas and was struggling. I have to use that it seems. Muttered Yuto to himself, thinking of his ace. Before Kiba could use his ace though, the angry visage of Issei, briefly appeared in his mind. No, but still, I can't lose here. Thought Kiba, Baruka. Allow me this one chance. Come at me with everything you have in one strike. Shouted Kiba, surprising many. Ho, oh, that is an odd request, it sounds like something my king would say. Said Baruka, from atop his stead. Very well, I will indulge you. Said Baruka, agreeing to the request, getting the crowd to cheer. The crowd roared in approval, as the two knights charged at each other. I'm sorry, Issei, also, I'm sorry, President. Thought Kiba after the clash, as both he and his opponent had been retired. Line break. The second match had Kaneko and Rosweiss against one of Saraorg's rooks, Gandoma Balam and the other knight of their team Livin Crisel. Gandoma was a behemoth of a man, three meters tall and full of muscle, particularly his arms, which wouldn't have been out of place on a giant. Livin on the other hand, was a gentle-looking blonde, equipped with a sword and light armor. I can't, thought Kaneko remembering Issei's words in the classroom and the power of his senjutsu, before remembering her sister and shuddering slightly. Kaneko what's wrong? asked Rossweiss in concern. Kaneko didn't answer. The battle ended in a draw once again. Kaneko was taken out quickly, and Rossweiss exhausted all her strength to take down their two opponents, leading to the four of them being retired. Line break. Governor Azazel, as we near the halfway point, is there anything you can say on this odd turn of events? Asked the announcer curiously, Hum, yes, it seems that the Grimori group is lacking their heart in this battle. Though it is too soon to say so, I don't think that they will be able to overcome Saraorg and his peerage, who are all united under his dream. Said Azazel honestly, line break. The next match had Zenovia and Gasper face Ludora Bune, the remaining knight for the Bale team, and Mistita Sabnok, the male bishop. The battle was not much of one, Zenovia was cursed quickly into the fight by the bishop, who temporarily sealed her ability to use her holy swords, while Gasper sacrificed himself to buy time, until Zenovia's curse wore off. Afterwards, she unleashed X Durandal on both her opponents, taking them out, however, Gasper too fell in battle, leaving the Grimori group with only a knight, a queen, a bishop and a king, with no pawn. Line break. The battle of queens was next. Akino Himahima against Kuisha Abaddon. The two took to the air and clashed with intense blasts of demonic energy. 
If Akino used fire, Kuisha countered with ice. If Akino used water, Abaddon used wind. It was a stalemate. Come now holy lightning priestess, is that all you have to offer? You certainly don't live up to your namesake. Taunted Kuisha. Akino stiffened at this, recalling as Issei claimed he would kill himself, if he ever became a fallen angel. I don't need holy lightning to beat you. Roared Akino, as she unleashed a multitude of attacks at Kuisha, exhausting herself. Kuisha laughed at this and a massive hole appeared in front of her, which sucked in all of Akino's attacks. This is the end for you. Declared Kuisha boldly, a multitude of holes quickly surrounded Akino and unleashed all her magic back on her, who, in her exhausted state, was easily retired. Line break. The next to last fight, was one not in the Grimori group's favor. A 12 was rolled, so Sarawarg himself came out to fight. Rias couldn't be sent out, as she had no illusions about beating a fresh Sarawarg and Rias didn't want to send Asia out, so Zenobia alone went to face Sarawarg. Knight of Grimori, before this fight begins, please answer me this, where is the Red Dragon Emperor? Asked Sarawarg. Zenovia sighed slightly, before answering. Issei felt as though he was being unfairly treated and neglected, so he left the peerage in an almost suicidal attempt. Said Zenovia honestly, you mean to say, that he forcibly changed from a devil to something else? Asked Sarawarg curiously, yes, using his will, he expelled his evil pieces and nearly died in doing so. Answered Zenovia, I see, I thought Hyodo was a man of substance, a man who I considered a worthy rival. Said Sarawarg in thought, before shaking his head. However, it seems I was wrong and he is simply a coward, one who cannot face his challenges head on. Finished Sarawarg, getting Zenovia to glare at him. How dare you, hissed Zenovia angrily, getting Sarawarg to look at her with a raised eyebrow. You have no idea, we too, had no idea it seems, but I won't let you spit on Issei's name like that, regardless of whether he is a member of President's Peerage or not. Whispered Zenovia, before shouting towards the end. Sarawarg grinned at this, there it is, that fire that has been missing from all of you so far. Come holy sword wielder, give me the fight that Hyoto won't. Said Sarawarg challengingly, as a weird mark appeared on all four of his limbs. Shallow light started to pour out from Sarawarg's limbs, before the marks vanished. A huge explosion burst from Sarawarg, the wind pressure from the blast, forming a crater under him. Sarawarg's body was now bathed in a white glow, it was Tuki. Zenovia was oblivious to the muttering of the crowd and the announcer, and charged at Sarawarg. Sarawarg fearlessly charged the oncoming holy sword wielder as well. Zenovia swung X Durandal at Sarawarg, who met it with a fist. Waves of energy burst from both of them, blinding them and the crowd. When they jumped back, the results of the clash were revealed. Oh, you actually cut through my Tuki, even wounded me slightly. Said, Sarawarg appraising Ly, as he observed a small cut on his fist. I won't let you insult Issei like that, he's already suffered enough and I won't let you add to that, especially by insulting him. Said Zenovia coldly, I see, I'm impressed by your will so much so, that I will face you, head on, as I would have faced him. Said Sarawarg, as the Tuki surrounding him increased. Sarawarg charged Zenovia again, who once again, tried to meet him with X Durandal. Sarawarg however, fearlessly continued his charge, bracing his left arm against the blade as he sunk his right fist into Zenovia's gut, causing a sickening crunch to be heard as he shattered two of her ribs and sent her to the ground. You were a good opponent, said Sarawarg as he turned around and begun to walk away. D don't, turn your back, on me, yelled Zenovia, as she coughed up a wad of blood. Oh, you are rather durable for a knight, commented Sarawarg, genuinely impressed. Issei received this attack and kept on fighting, I will as well, said Zenovia boldly. I might just be a stupid power type, one who knows nothing of strategy or tact, but still, I won't give up, wheezed Zenovia. That is some spirit you have there. Very few people have wills that strong, especially after receiving an attack like that. Praised Sarawark. If I go down here without a fight, I'll never be able to face him again. Huffed Zenovia. Very well then. Along with my respect for your determination, I will give you this as well. Said Sarawark with sharp eyes, as all his tuki engulfed his right hand, causing the blood from the cut he received earlier, 
to evaporate from the pressure, while the fist itself seemed to glow with immense power. This is a punch which can give critical wounds by even touching it slightly. A half-hearted attack won't be able to stop this, said Saraorg loudly. Xenovia was undeterred and focused all her power into her sword, gritting her teeth in concentration. Xenovia charged at Saraorg who stood there in wait. Haya, roared Xenovia, as she brought the dual holy sword down on Saraorg's arm, before an enormous flash occurred. When the light died away, there was Saraorg, missing his right arm, however collapsed at his feet, was the motionless form of Xenovia. Magnificent, I will give you my right arm. You truly proved yourself a worthy opponent, said Saraorg to the downed Xenovia, before her exhaustion overcame her and she passed out. Line break. After this battle, Saraorg proposed a one-on-one -on -one battle between kings, to decide the battle, since it would be inevitable, with only Asia and Rias left. After some discussion, Saraorg's proposal was accepted and the two kings faced each other. I wanted to fight, the Red Dragon Emperor, said Saraorg, getting Rias' attention. I wanted to prove, that I was even stronger than that fabled creation, to cement my reputation. Continued Saraorg, however, it seems something has happened between him and all of you. Said Saraorg, getting Rias to look down. I won't cry, it is none of my business in the way that Knight fought for his honor, it would be disrespectful for me to accuse him of being a coward again, especially with her taking my arm and forcing me to use my phoenix tear. Said Saraorg, genuinely impressed with Xenovia. That being said, I'm afraid I will not hold back here today, cousin. Prepare yourself, Rias Grimori declared Saraorg. Line break. The match was over, Rhea stood no chance against Saraorg. Even at her best, Saraorg would have crushed her. As it was, she was beaten within a minute, unable to land a single hit on Saraorg. Saraorg Bale had totally and utterly, defeated Rhea's Grimori. Chapter 6 Would You Love Me? Issei had watched the entire match, with a poker face that Sona could not see through in the slightest. Even as each of his former and some current friends were trounced by their opponents, Issei didn't flinch in the slightest, never tearing his eyes from the screen. As the battle ended and the broadcast switched to opinions on the battle from various people, Issei stood up. I will take my leave now, said Issei simply. Before you go, just tell me one thing, said Sona quietly. Issei paused, but didn't turn around. Will you ever forgive them? asked Sona curiously. Issei didn't respond and merely stared at the door, leaving his back facing Sona. After a solid minute, Issei turned his head over his shoulder and looked Sona in the eye. Perhaps, said Issei, before closing his eyes and turning back to the door. Although, said Issei getting Sona's attention. For some, there can be redemption. Whether I come to see them as friends again, is entirely different, to whether I forgive them or not. Said Issei, before walking to the door. However, some may be forgiven more easily than others, said Issei, before he opened the door and left, closing it behind him silently. Sona stared at the door for a moment, studying it intensely. Well, all things considered, things could be worse, but it seems Rias has lost her dragon for good. Thought Sona grimly, line break, you've been surprisingly quiet for a while now, Diedrake. Is something wrong? Thought Issei, no, not really. As strange as it may sound, things are in fact better for me now. Replied Diedreg honestly. That's odd. Better how? Asked Issei curiously, as he walked through Kuo, school having finished sometime during the battle, between Saraorg and Rias' respective peerages. Well, not to sound too selfish, but ever since that time, your perverseness had gone down quite a bit. Even more after you talked with Gabriel and even more after that, when you mated with that Neko show, it even lessened each time you did it. Said Diedreg thoughtfully. Um I don't understand, thought Issei in confusion. Well, with the Grimori acknowledging your perverseness and using it to help you get stronger, my heart was almost broken, especially after that old geezer gave us those appalling names. Said Diedreg, sounding close to tears. However, since then, you've changed and become stronger in non-perverse ways, even faster than I could have imagined, you are almost someone I can be proud of now. Praised Diedrake. Yeah, I did put you through a lot, didn't I Diedrake? Sorry about that. Thought Issei sheepishly. A lot indeed. Agreed Diedrake. Well, at least things are better now. Thought Issei, before stopping at a door. 
Issei was now standing outside his previous residency. The Hyodo household, which, for all intents and purposes, was more like the occult research club household. Issei sighed for a moment, before knocking on the door. After a brief wait, Issei's father opened the door. Issei, said Issei's father in shock. Issei didn't know what to expect, but he was suddenly pulled into the house and given a hug. My boy, where did you disappear off to? Asked the older Hyodo male, before calling for his wife. Issei's mum came by after a moment and upon seeing Issei, quickly ran up to him and gave him a hug as well. Haha, now I feel bad. I thought you would have been happy, having a bunch of pretty daughters, without a perverted son. Said Issei with a laugh. Even if you're a perv, you're our little perv. Said Issei's dad jovially, with his wife nodding, before he leaned in closer. And, to be honest, the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. Whispered Issei's father, getting his son to look at him in surprise. Why you mean? Asked Issei in shock. He just gave Issei a small wink, before leaning back. Where have you been all this time? Asked Issei's mother. Well, that's some story, but mostly, it was a journey of self-discovery. I even got my own house and a job now. Said Issei with a chuckle. Really? Asked Issei's mum in surprise. Yep, I really grew up. Said Issei proudly. I'll say, just look at how big you've gotten. I can't believe I'm envious of my own son. Said Issei's dad, referring to his son's new and impressive physique. He he well, if I'm going to be a man, might as well look like one right. Asked Issei bashfully. I'll go make us some tea. Said Issei's mother, before heading to the kitchen. In the meantime, said Issei's dad, as he dragged Issei to a single seat sofa and sat himself down on the couch. I want to know who the special lady is. Said Issei's dad quietly to Issei. W what lady? Asked Issei in surprise. Don't be coy with me. You think I wouldn't notice my little boy finally graduated from a little pervert to a man. I'll bet that is where the new physique came from. Said Issei's dad, getting his son to look away bashfully. W well it is someone new actually. Confessed Issei. I figured. They didn't say anything, but a lot of the girls around here have been rather sad this past month. They tried to hide it, but, being married for such a long time, helps you pick up when a girl is hiding something. I'm guessing something happened between you all. Said Issei's father sagely. Issei was rather surprised at his father's foresight, but nodded nonetheless. Er yeah, some things happened and things are not quite right between us all right now. It is also the reason I got a new place. Said Issei truthfully. I see, well enough about that, tell me about this new girl. Is she stacked? Asked Issei's dad lecherously. Well, I can't deny I'm my father's son. Thought Issei in amusement. Yeah, she is. Said Issei with a chuckle, before his mother came and set down tea for all of them and sat next to her husband. Well, tell us about her Issei, how do you meet? Asked Issei's dad. Another. Asked Issei's mother in surprise, to which her husband nodded. Well, it was interesting to say the least. Said Issei with a nervous chuckle, as he recalled meeting Kuroka again. Line break. Flashback. Line break. Okay, I think I missed Kuo, badly. Said Issei aloud, as he looked around and found himself in a strange open meadow. There was a lush forest behind him, with a small town to the front of him, but something felt off to Issei. It feels like... I'm seeing something, but it doesn't exist. Thought Issei in confusion, before he quickly jumped back to avoid a blast of energy. Issei quickly summoned Deidre, preparing to enter his balance breaker, when he heard a voice. NYA, Red Dragon Emperor, what are you doing here, NYA? Asked a voice that Issei recognized. As the smoke kicked up from the attack cleared, a voluptuous woman in a black kimono was revealed to Issei. Uh, accident. Said Issei, as he lowered his guard somewhat. NYA, you managed to find this place by accident? Questioned Kuroka in surprise. Yeah, what is this place anyway? Asked Issei curiously, lowering his arm so it was now by his side again, but not dropping his guard. Hum, don't worry about that, although, now that you're here, even if it was by accident, what do you say about giving me some kittens, NYA? Proposed Kuroka as she walked closer to Issei, until she was right in front of him and looked up at him with a half-lidded gaze. Would you love them? Would you love me, as well? 
asked Issei seriously. Of course I would. What mother wouldn't love her kittens and her mate? Heard Kuroka. Issei stared into her eyes for a moment, searching for the truth before closing his eyes and giving a small nod. Hum, okay, why not? Said Issei. N-Y-A, exclaimed Kuroka in shock, as her eyes widened in surprise. What, were you joking? Asked Issei curiously. No, I just didn't think you'd accept, said Kuroka still in shock. Well, you were straightforward about it, so why not? Asked Issei, as he caused the boosted gear to disappear. Hum, is this a joke? Asked Kuroka curiously, eyes narrowing. Nope, said Issei simply. That's fine with me then, said Kuroka, as she pushed Issei onto his back and slowly crawled up to him. You know, I have so many questions right now, but, I'm not going to let a chance like this pass by. Said Kuroka, before she planted her soft lips on Issei's own. Issei reciprocated the kiss in turn, finally letting his guard down. Not bad, I guess that wasn't your first kiss. Asked Kuroka, as she pulled her head back, breaking the kiss. Well, technically no, but that was a first, as far as an intense kiss goes. Replied Issei honestly. Kuroka smiled, before coming down for another kiss, this time slipping her tongue into Issei's mouth, which he met with his own. Pulling back from the kiss, Kuroka sat up and pulled her obi off, dropping it beside them, letting her kimono open slightly, showing more of her cleavage. Well Red Dragon, are you getting excited, NYA? Asked Kuroka, if we are going to do this, at least call me Issei. Said Issei with a small frown. All right then, said Kuroka before she opened her kimono, revealing her chest to Issei. Well, Issei, are you getting excited now, NYA? Asked Kuroka. Issei didn't give a verbal reply, but instead, sat up and grasped Kuroka's ample bosom with both hands. Kuroka mewled in enjoyment at Issei's ministrations. Issei gently fondled her sizable assets in equal parts curiosity and wonder. They're so soft, commented Issei, slightly surprised. NYA. Well, Nekomata normally choose a suitable male to reproduce with, however, trying to do so without, generous assets, is difficult. Explained Kuroka happily, Issei suddenly grew bolder and latched onto Kuroka's bosom with his mouth, while his hands focused on the one he left unattended. Kuroka gasped at the sudden sensation and wrapped her arms around Issei's back tightly. After a moment, Issei switched his mouth over to the other breast, causing Kuroka to let out an appreciative moan. Eventually, Kuroka had enough and gently released her grip on Issei's back and brought her hands to his shoulders, before gentle pushing him down again. Well, I think you're ready, NYA, said Kuroka, feeling a bulge pressing against her posterior. Kuroka snaked down Issei's body, until she was now resting on his thighs. Teasingly, Kuroka reached down and caressed Issei's lower abdomen, before her hands reached his belt. Using slow, deliberate movements, Kuroka undid the belt and pulled it off Issei's pants. You won't be needing this for a while, NYA. Said Kuroka, as she dropped it next to her obi. Kuroka then unbuttoned Issei's pants and unzipped them, before pulling them down, leaving him in only his underwear. Issei merely gazed at Kuroka, his eyes alternating between her teasing gaze and her bountiful chest. Issei couldn't decide which was more attractive, although, he reasoned that the gaze would change, but the breasts wouldn't, therefore, the breasts were superior. Kuroka then, unlike previously, quickly pulled of Issei's underwear, revealing her prize. Kuroka gazed at it thoughtfully for a moment, before looking at Issei. What? No insecurities about size, NYA? Teased Kuroka, getting a shrug and somewhat lecherous smirk from Issei. Hey, it'll get the job done, won't it? Retorted Issei which made Kuroka smirk. Well, you're not wrong, NYA, replied Kuroka with a Cheshire-like smirk, before grasping the object in question. For the record, it is big enough, with a little extra, so you can rest. Assured, NYA, teased Kuroka, getting Issei to mentally exhale in relief. Phew, thought she caught my bluff, but, she says it is big, awesome. Thought Issei proudly, well, are you ready to become a man, NYA? Questioned Kuroka teasingly, I don't know why you're still teasing me, you're the one who wants kittens. Pointed out Issei, while inwardly restraining himself from cracking. Hum, I guess you have a point, NYA. 
said Kuroka thoughtfully, before, in one swift movement, she impaled herself on Issei. Oh, this feels good, moaned Kuroka happily, even leaving out her usual verbal tick momentarily. Issei, once again sat up, and again attacked Kuroka's chest with his hands and mouth. The double stimulatory effect, caused Kuroka to moan throatily. Not to be outdone, Kuroka quickly regained her senses and ground into Issei softly, getting him to pause in his ministrations and release a soft moan himself. NYA, that's more like it, whispered Kuroka, as she brought her lips down to Issei's once again, while continuing to grind the two of them together. Kuroka pushed Issei down once again. You can be in charge next time, said Kuroka simply, before raising herself off Issei's body, before slamming back down on him. Kuroka repeated her actions, mewling in pleasure all the while. Issei himself was captivated by Kuroka's bountiful bouncing chest, unable to do anything at the sight of them, coupled with the pleasurable sensations that Kuroka was currently administering. Kuroka's moans started to increase in volume, before she was startled somewhat, by two hands gripping her firm posterior. You can be in charge, but I'll help, said Issei simply, before he strengthened his grip and proceeded to assist Kuroka, as she bounced on him. With both of them working together, the two quickly approached their climax. Ung, um, Kuroka, I'm pretty sure, ah, I know your answer, but out, ung, um, or in. Asked Issei, as he was barely holding himself back. NYA, don't ask stupid questions, you know I'm not letting moan a single drop escape. Said Kuroka, breathing heavily, as the two approached their respective ends. Kuroka went first, slamming down on Issei as she gripped him tightly, which, in turn, caused Issei to reach his limit as well. After a few seconds, Kuroka collapsed onto Issei, their chests pressing against each other, as both lay there panting. As far as accidents go, this was the best one of my life. Said Issei, after he had regained his breath. Well, I didn't expect this would happen either, but I'm glad I was the scout today, NYA. Said Kuroka, yeah. You never did tell me where I was, said Issei thoughtfully, as he wrapped his arms around Kuroka's slender back. Do you really want to know? Or, would you rather we go for round two, NYA? Asked Kuroka with a seductive smirk. Well, I still need about another minute before I'm ready, why not just give me the short version? Suggested Issei, you're near where I, along with the rest of Team Valley are currently hiding. Said Kuroka honestly, they, they won't come here, right? Like, if you don't report back within an hour, they won't come and search for you, right? Asked Issei nervously, not for another three hours, although, I'm sure Lefei would love to join in, NYA. Replied Kuroka teasingly, yeah, well I don't really relish the idea of Valley or Baiko coming over here. Said Issei with a grimace. Hum, well in any case, it's been a minute, so time for round two, NYA said Kuroka, before she sat up again. Best, accident, ever, thought Issei. Line break. After numerous rounds of intercourse, the amorous duo had got redressed and Issei finally told Kuroka what had happened to him recently. NYA, let me see your wings then, please Issei, NYA. Asked Kuroka shyly, with a small blush, biting her index finger coyly. Gah, who could refuse such a face? Questioned Issei before his wings burst from his back. Kuroka looked so excited seeing them and practically pounced on Issei, pushing him back to the floor. Ah, that hurt you know, said Issei, as his wings fluttered. Wow, they even move like my tails, said Kuroka in childish awe, before she softly caressed his wings with both hands. This feels, weird, said Issei, as strange tingles raced through his spine. Good or bad, asked Kuroka curiously. Sort of good, but mostly weird. Explained Issei. Hum, can you wrap me in them? Asked Kuroka coyly. Issei tried to bring his wings in and they obeyed, enveloping Kuroka. NYA, so warm and fluffy. Good night, said Kuroka with a yawn. Oh oi, you can't just fall asleep on me like that. Said Issei indignantly, but Kuroka was already fast asleep, curling up against him unconsciously. Sigh well. I am a little tired myself, muttered Issei, before going to sleep as well. Line break, do you think we should do something? Asked a man, I'm not sure, they look comfortable, 
replied a girl. Still, she should have reported back a while ago. Added the man. W well, maybe they got distracted. Suggested the girl timidly. Well, knowing Kuroka, if someone like him agreed to helping her achieve her dream, I guess she would take it, especially with Valley constantly refusing her. Said the man. NYA, Arthur be quiet, I'm trying to nap here. Mumbled Kuroka sleepily. That's all well and good, despite that fact that you never reported back. Although, being on top of the Red Dragon Emperor, who currently has 10 angel wings, never mind that he is meant to be a devil, wrapped around you, is something unusual. Replied Arthur, the wielder of Caliburn. I'll explain later, I need to test something now that you reminded me of it. Said Kuroka, now wide awake. Issei, time for round 8, or 7, or 9, I forgot. Said Kuroka, rousing Issei, whose wings opened involuntarily, as he stretched his arms. Issei blinked, before looking into Kuroka's playful eyes, before glancing to the left and seeing the two blonde-haired Pendragon siblings. Issei sighed at this, before palming his face. I told you someone would come, muttered Issei with a groan. Well, it isn't Valley or Baiko and look, even Le Fay came, NYA. Said Kuroka happily, I'm not doing this, in front of them. Said Issei quietly, NYA. Fine then, said Kuroka, I'll be back in him, half an hour. Said Kuroka, as she made a shooing motion with her left hand at the siblings. Uh, what do you need half an hour for? Asked Le Fay curiously. Don't worry Le Fay, let's just go wait for her. Said Arthur as he turned and headed away from the Nekosho and Dragon, gesturing for Lefei to follow him. After a brief pause, Lefei nodded, turned on her heel and left. Okay, round 8, this time I'm in charge, said Issei, once they disappeared. Oh taking charge are we, NYA? Questioned Kuroka teasingly. Fine, but keep your wings out, I want to see something, NYA. Said Kuroka, Issei rose an eyebrow at the weird request, before shrugging. Fine, said Issei, getting Kuroka to smirk. Line break, end flashback, line break. Well, I can say that I had met her a while ago. However, I ran into her again about three days after I left here. Said Issei, after snapping out of his memories. Really, how did that go? Asked Issei's mother. Well it was interesting, we talked, mostly about what we had each been up to lately. After a while, she recommended I get a place to stay, since I have a job and she offered to help out as well. Since then she's been teaching me some new things. Said Issei lamely. When can we meet her? Asked Issei's father. Oh well. The truth is, she is. Actually Kaneko's big sister and they're not exactly on the best of terms at the moment, so I don't think bringing her by is a good idea right now. Said Issei uneasily. After all, Kuroka was a stray devil, and devils lived here. I see, well, hopefully once they reconcile you can introduce us, said Issei's father, sure, why not, said Issei, with a slightly nervous chuckle, after a bit more small talk, Issei decided that it was time for him to leave, come by again soon, said Issei's mother from the door, her husband behind her as they both waved at their son, will do, said Issei with a smile, before walking off, well, isn't that nice, he got himself a girlfriend and everything seems to be going so much better for him now. Said Issei's mother. Yeah, that's the reason. Thought Issei's father. Chapter 7 Forgiveness is earned. Zenobia had been unconscious for over 4 hours now. While her body wasn't weak, in any sense of the word, taking a brutal punch from Sarawurd, then exhausting all her energy in a final attack, had drained her completely. As she returned to consciousness, she found that she wasn't in as much pain as she expected. I was wondering when you would wake up, said a voice, getting Zenovia to turn in its direction. Zenovia stared blankly at the person before turning her head away. What are you doing here, Issei? Asked Zenovia, as the newly reincarnated angel walked up to her bedside. I saw the game, heard everything too, Issei muttered, getting Zenovia to look at him. Did you come to gloat? I wouldn't hold it against you if you did, we couldn't win without you. Queried Zenovia. No, I'm not that petty. True, I tore into you all on the clubroom, and I don't regret anything I said, but I was venting a bit as well. Confessed Issei. You weren't wrong. Zenovia added, to which Issei nodded. So why are you here? 
asked Zenobia. Like I said, I heard everything, particularly, what you said. Said Issei. Zenobia turned her head away from Issei again. I meant it all, whether you agree or disagree with it doesn't matter. Said Zenobia. Who said I disagree with it? I was surprised in fact, especially that you were the one to say all of that. Why? Asked Issei curiously. The way we all turned on you, it is just like what happened to me with the church. Zenobia started, looking back at Issei again. I knew something that they didn't want to acknowledge and was turned on because of it. While the circumstances are not identical, I feel as though the intent between both situations is similar, similar enough that I feel guilty and ashamed of myself. Said Zenobia, so you mean to say, if they weren't similar, you wouldn't feel guilty? Asked Issei curiously, don't twist my words, you know I'm not the most intellectual individual. Retorted Zenobia, what we did was wrong, there is no question there. The reason I feel extra guilty, is because I should have understood enough to not turn on you. I know how much that hurts, and then I did the same in turn, to someone who has been nothing but nice to me. Said Zenobia sourly, well, you weren't there at that time, so how could you know? Said Issei airily, I realize that, that isn't why I feel bad. The fact that I turned on you, without even understanding your reluctance and thinking only of Rias, is why I feel bad. The church thought only of keeping their faith and I thought only of Rias. Either way, both of us were overlooked by those we thought we could trust. That's why I feel bad, explained Zenobia. Hum, I never thought of it like that, said Issei thoughtfully, placing a hand under his face and scratching his jaw. Although, I still find it strange, how passionately you defended me, I mean Saraord can say all he wants, he doesn't know the truth. Muttered Issei, because, after how much we hurt you, I won't stand for anyone else doing so again. Said Zenobia hotly, why, that's what I'm not understanding. Questioned Issei, genuinely confused. Even in the beginning, I didn't think much of you, just another devil. However, the way you strongly defended Asia and stood against us was interesting. Said Zenobia, getting Issei's face to narrow. However, the moment where I knew what I thought of you changed, was when you asked Lord Michael to allow me to pray. Said Zenobia, why, change to what, queried Issei, that was the point I realized why the others liked you, and the point I started to like you as more than a friend. Said Zenobia with a small smile, I told you that I wanted to join you peerage in the future, as I wanted to stay with you, however, now that is impossible and furthermore, we hurt you. Said Zenobia with a small frown, before turning away again. Issei didn't respond for a minute, absorbing what Zenobia said. Do you really mean all that? Asked Issei softly, getting Zenobia to look back at him. Every word, I love you Issei. Said Zenobia, getting Issei to inhale sharply. How can I trust that you won't hurt me again? Asked Issei quietly. I promise on my honor as a knight and on my blade. Said Zenobia strongly, getting Issei to look at her with a searching look. Issei suddenly smiled and it eased Zenobia's nerves. Thank you, Zenobia and I, I forgive you and would like to be friends again. Said Issei hopefully, I'd like to be more than that, but I will build my trust up with you again first. Said Zenobia bluntly, which caused Issei to chuckle. Well you know me, I can't stay mad at a great set of boobs for too long. Said Issei, somewhat embarrassed. Does that mean you will forgive the others in time? Asked Zenobia curiously which caused Issei's face to harden. Maybe some, but some, especially Rias and Asia, I won't be able to forgive, they hurt me too much, especially those two. Said Issei stiffly, I see, said Zenobia, before the door to the room opened. Oh, I didn't think you would be here, Red Dragon. Said the figure that had just entered the room, closing the door behind him. Well, I'm sure you realize by now, I'm full of surprises, Saraorg said Issei, as the bale entered the room. I suppose I should apologize first and foremost. I judged you without knowing the situation, and after how desperately she fought for your honor, I would be wrong to do so. Said Saraorg. Zenobia didn't respond and merely turned her head away with a small blush, a surprising action from the normally calm, and also shameless, stoic. Yeah, I didn't expect that from Zenobia either, but I can't say I'm upset about it. Said Issei kindly, getting Zenobia's blush to increase marginally. Now that you are here though, 
I know I have no right to ask, but what happened? Asked Saraord curiously. Like you said, you have no right to ask, this is between me and Ramori's peerage. Said Issei, getting a stiff nod from Saraord. True, but she is my cousin and while beating her in battle does help my reputation, I care for her all the same. Said Saraord firmly. Isn't that the case? Muttered Issei sourly. If you must know, your cousin is a rather selfish person when she wants to be and disregards others and how they feel. Said Issei harshly, getting Saraord to narrow his eyes. What do you mean by that? Asked Saraord stiffly. What I mean, is there are only so many times a person will risk their life to save you and be taken granted for, before they snap. That's all that happened, said Issei bitterly. Saraord didn't respond, although, I heard of you wanting to face me in battle. I also would love to fight you, but not for reputation. I want to fight you because you are someone who cares deeply for his peerage, who care deeply for him in turn. I saw the battle, you are all united. I don't wish to fight you because that was how things would have gone, if I was in this game, I don't want to fight you for prestige either. I want to fight you because you are someone worth fighting, someone who fights for others and sacrifices himself for others as well. Declared Issei strongly. Now I feel even guiltier for having questioned your worth. I could not have asked for a more honorable battle. I would enjoy facing you in battle. Said Saraorg. That being said, I should warn you. Said Issei, getting Saraorg to look at him in interest. I saw you use Tuki, so it is only fair I tell you, that I have learned true Senjutsu from a master. Furthermore, said Issei, before his wings burst from his back. I'm an angel now and am capable of using light as my weapon something which is absolutely toxic for a devil. Finished Issei. Saraorg merely grinned. I'm getting excited already, Saraorg said in anticipation. In any case, releasing my wings broke my key cloak, so I'm going to need to go now. I look forward to our upcoming battle though. Also, see you later, Xenovia. Said Issei, before disappearing in a burst of light. That Issei sure is something. Commented Saraorg with a laugh, before exiting the room, leaving Xenovia alone. He is, thought Xenovia, happy that Issei had forgiven her. Line break. Issei arrived home and was startled to find someone already there. Irina, what are you doing here? Also, why are angels suddenly breaking into my house this week? Asked Issei, before whispering the second part. Irina was sitting on the sofa and fidgeted. Uh, um Issei, struggled Irina before she simply stood up and offered something to Issei, with her head bowed. Issei looked at it in surprise. Is this what I think it is? Asked Issei curiously, as he took the offered object. Yep, I've kept it all this time. Said Irina cheerfully, with a forced smile. Issei looked at the object, it was a cardboard dagger, held together with tape. Why are you giving this to me? Asked Issei quietly. Issei, I'm really sorry. Said Irina sadly. Issei looked at her and frowned. Issei gave her back the cardboard dagger and Irina felt as though her heart had been torn out. Issei then disappeared in a flash of light and Irina dropped to her knees, tears beginning to fall from her eyes. He won't forgive me, thought Irina sadly, before another flash of light occurred and Issei was back in front of her. Issei, said Irina with a sniff, which turned to shock when she saw what Issei was holding. In Issei's hand, was another crudely made cardboard dagger. Issei, you kept yours as well, said Irina in surprise, from her place on the ground. Issei offered her his hand and she took it, standing back to her feet and quickly wiped her eyes. Of course I did, you were my first and only friend growing up. When you left, it was one of the only things I had left to remember you by, even if I thought you were a boy, said Issei quietly. Irina gave a small giggle at this, but it was strangled. I still can't believe you thought I was a boy, said Irina softly, as she blinked away her tears. You know Irina, out of all the people who turned on me, yours probably hurt me the most, said Issei sadly. Irina looked at Issei sadly. I'm sorry Issei, I didn't know about what had happened to you, said Irina. I know, that's why I'm not upset with you like I am with those four, said Issei, growling towards the end. But even before all of this, before Deidre, before becoming a devil, before all of it, you were my friend. Said Issei sadly. I I'm so sorry Issei. Said Irina cheerfully. Out of everyone there, you, 
should have been on my side, it really hurt when you agreed with everyone that I was the bad guy. Said Issei, as he grimaced slightly in pain. Issei, what can I do to make it up to you? Asked Irina desperately. Issei thought on this for a moment. Show me your wings, said Issei and after a moment of confusion, Irina complied, revealing her two wings to Issei. If you have impure thoughts outside of love, you'll fall, won't you? Questioned Issei rhetorically, already knowing the answer. Irina nodded. Then kiss me here and now, said Issei, getting Irina to blush. WW what? stuttered Irina in embarrassment. If you really love me, you won't fall right. If you don't fall, it will mean you love me, truly love me. Gabriel told me that an angel who follows their heart, not out of sin, but out of love, won't ever be able to fall. That is why, if you really love me, this will prove it without a doubt. Said Issei calmly. Irina took a moment to absorb what Issei had said and nodded her head. Will you do it? Asked Issei curiously. I I will. I love you Issei and if this is what I need to do to prove it, then I will gladly do it. Declared Irina boldly, as she placed her cardboard dagger down on the coffee table. Issei walked over to the table as well, placing his dagger down next to Irina's and turned to face her. Irina's heartbeat quickened, as she drew closer to Issei, taking in his stern looking face and calming brown eyes. Irina stepped closer to Issei, until she was only a hair's breadth away from touching him and angled her head upwards, eyes half closing, as she leaned in. Issei brought his face closer to Irina's, so close that she could feel his warm breath against her face. Last chance to change your mind, whispered Issei. My mind is made up, I love you, whispered Irina, before pressing her lips against Issei's. Issei reciprocated the kiss, wrapping his left arm around Irina's waist while his right gently caressed her cheek and neck, deepening the kiss. Both had closed their eyes and in that moment, only felt each other. Irina was in bliss, she had been waiting for this moment for months now and after what had transpired, worried that it might never happen, but Issei was really kissing her. After a few more seconds, the two broke the kiss, eyes opening slowly. Irina looked into Issei's eyes happily. Issei looked behind Irina briefly, before turning his gaze back to Irina's. I love you Irina and I guess this means you really love me as well. Said Issei happily, which caused Irina to shed a tear. Irina still had two pure white wings behind her and that was all the evidence that Issei needed. Suddenly though, Issei started to tear up, which surprised Irina, even more so when he pulled her into a hug and buried his face into her shoulder. Just please promise me, said Issei weakly, please promise me that you will always love me and won't turn on me again. Issei continued tearfully, you, you had so much more of my heart than anyone in that room, because you weren't just a girl I liked. You were my friend even before all that. My precious childhood friend, said Issei, getting Irina's eyes to widen. As far as everyone in that room went, you were irreplaceable to me, said Issei, getting Irina's heart to soar. Irina gently pulled Issei's head off her shoulder and looked into his bloodshot eyes. I love you Issei, now and forever, said Irina, before giving Issei another kiss, which he happily reciprocated. I love you too Irina now and forever, said Issei with a smile. That's all for now till next time.